My name is Limbic, and this is Star Class. In this lesson, I will be taking you through an introduction of the Terran race, and explaining to you the most common units, and showing you how they work. In this video, I will not be going through every single Terran unit, and research and upgrade that they have, because I originally made the video doing that, and it ended up being about an hour long. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, welcome everyone to a small little custom game I've created. I just want to demonstrate to you all how Terran structures work in this part of the video. So in order to construct a Terran structure, you must first select an SCV, and then you select which structure you want to build. So we're going to build a supply depot here. You can see that once construction begins, the SCV will kind of stick around the building, stabbing it while it's constructing until it's finished. And then once the building is finished, the SCV is then free to go back to mining or constructing other buildings or any other things that SCVs do. However, what would happen if, say, the SCV died while building something. So let's just go ahead and start another supply depot here and then we'll kill off this SCV. You can see that construction actually halts and it will not continue until you bring another SCV over and have it finish the construction of the building as you can see here. Alright, you might have noticed I did something a little strange here to the supply depot. Supply depots can actually lift and lower themselves as you can see here. When a supply depot is lifted, units cannot walk over it, but once it's lowered, units can walk over it. And this is useful because this means that as Terran, you can create yourself full wall-offs. What this means is, if an enemy were trying to come up here, they would first have to destroy these supply depots before they could actually advance any further. However, if I want to leave, I can actually just lower one of these supply depots and then walk on out. And then I can raise it back to make sure that this area is defended in case of any kind of counter-attack. Alright, all Terran production facilities, them being any Terran facility that produces units, can also lift off. So the command center is a production facility, so let's go ahead and tell it to lift off. Now you can see that it's actually flying, and we can float it around and have it go to other places. So if I wanted to for some reason, I could land the command center here. And this is nice because this means that, yes, while your structures are constructing, they are vulnerable because the SCV has to be kept alive, but what you can do is build your extra command center, say, in a safe area, that way they're easy to defend while they're building, and then once they're finished, you can actually lift them off and then put them where you want. So we could say, wait for this command center to actually finish, and then once it's done, we can lift it off and put it over here, say. Whereas the other races have to start their new town halls in the more vulnerable locations and hope that they finish there. Of course, if your command center is in danger, that means it, it can also lift off and run to safety. And as long as the enemy units cannot attack air, the command center will be perfectly safe. Alright, the command center is also capable of upgrading itself. You have two options, the orbital command and the planetary fortress, and I'm going to demonstrate them both to you here and now. In order to upgrade a command center into an orbital command, you must first have a barracks constructed, which we've built over here. We'll talk more about what the barracks is later in this video. So, once you have a barracks constructed, you can go ahead and upgrade the command center into an orbital command, which we'll do here. As you can see, now that, we, now that we've hit the button, the command center is transforming. While it's transforming, you can't train any SCVs, and you also can't lift off. If you want to do either of those things, you'll actually have to cancel this transformation or wait for it to complete. Once the transformation is complete, as you can see, we can once again begin training SCVs. We lost the ability to transform into a planetary fortress, so that means that when you upgrade a command center, you have to choose between orbital command and planetary fortress. 
you also gain access to three new abilities. So let's go through them one by one. First is Call Down Mule. This is basically like a super worker. So you can see here are our SCVs, these are our normal workers. And if we call down a mule to this mineral field, it will begin harvesting minerals too, but it harvests minerals much more efficiently. For each of these little trips that a mule does, it returns you 30 minerals, whereas for each of these trips that an SCV does, it only returns you 5 minerals. Now, mules do have a limited lifespan, they only last for 90 seconds, however, they still are well worth it, and they are what you want to be spending most of your command center energy on. It's also worth noting that mules cannot mine Vespine gas. They can only mine minerals. Alright, the next ability is the call down extra supplies. So what you do with this one is you target a supply depot, and then it will basically double the usefulness of it. So it's almost like building an extra supply depot instantly. Now, the thing about this is that it costs exactly as much energy to do this as it does to call down a mule. Which means that every time you use this ability, you are basically giving up a mule. And that's the reason why most people agree that it's not a good idea to be using this too often. It's okay if you're in a pinch and you really need to get rid of that supply block right away, but most of the time you want to be calling down mules as much as possible. So try to avoid, avoid using this ability whenever possible. Alright, the third and final ability of the Orb of Command is called the Scanner Sweep. Now, this will reveal any area of the map that's covered by the fog of war. So let's just go over here, for instance. We don't know what's going on here because it's a fog of war. However, if we drop a scan on top of it, now we can see everything that's going on here. So you can like drop this right on top of an enemy base and figure out exactly what they are up to. It's also worth noting that this reveals cloaked units. Cloaked units are invisible units, and unless you have some form of detection, not only will you not be able to see a cloaked unit, but you will not be able to fight back against it when it is attacking you. So if you're being attacked by invisible units, drop a scan on top of it, and then you'll be able to fight back. Alright, let's talk about the other option that command centers have to upgrade. The Planetary Fortress. In order to upgrade into a Planetary Fortress, you will first require an Engineering Bay which we've built over here. Again, we'll talk more about that later. But once you have the engineering bay built, you can begin its transformation. So let's start that now. All right, so now the planetary fortress is done. You might have noticed there's now a giant cannon on top of it. And this is used to defend itself. It will shoot at enemy ground units trying to attack the planetary fortress. It cannot shoot air, but it does a lot of damage to enemy ground units. And it is very, very difficult for opponents to kill because of that. It also has a lot more armor, so it takes a lot more damage than an orbital command or a regular command center. Now one last thing I would like to mention that Terran can do is they can repair anything classified as mechanical with SCVs. So let's go ahead and have these marines start attacking this planetary fortress. You can see how little damage it takes from these marines. But it is taking some damage. However, if we have these SCVs, we'll just use one SCV for this, actually just repair it, you can see now it's beginning to actually regain its health, or at least not lose health as fast. It looks like its health bar isn't changing, but bear in mind it's still taking damage from these marines, so... But it's also being repaired by this SCV. Now, if you have more than one SCV repair a mechanical unit at once, it will regain health much more quickly. So let's demonstrate that here. You can see now it's actually just out healing the DPS of these marines. So that means that if, say, a huge enemy force began attacking your planetary fortress and you just had all the SCVs that were mining there mass repair it, it will die to almost nothing. Alright, that's it for Terran structures. I'm going to go ahead and move on to Terran units now. Alright, welcome everyone to HOTS Unit Tester. This is actually a custom map in StarCraft that allows you to build and destroy units instantly. And the reason why we're here is because this will make it a lot easier for me to show you what all of these Terran units do. Of course, in a real game, you will not have these kinds of powers, so if you are confused as to why you're not able to do the things I'm able to here, that is the reason. 
All right, so I mentioned that we're going to be talking about the Terran units. Now, again, I'd like to reiterate, I'm not going to be going through every single Terran unit and research here, just the most common ones, because if I went through all of that, then this video would be extremely long. All right, this first structure here is called the barracks. I mentioned it a little earlier. Now, the barracks is where Terran will build their ground army most of the time. So let's go ahead and talk about the first unit available to you called the Marine. Now these units are the bread and butter of almost every Terran army. They're cheap, they build quickly, they do a lot of damage, especially for their cost. They can shoot ground and air. They're very good in almost every situation. So almost every Terran strategy revolves around having a lot of these and using them as the main component of their army. They also have a couple upgrades available to them, which we will be discussing in this video because they're very useful and they'll be seen in almost every game. The next unit that you can build is called the Reaper. Now, if you're a new player, I would actually recommend avoiding building these units. And the reason for that is because they're very fragile, they do very little damage, and they're basically used only as a scout. They can actually jump up and down short cliffs which makes them very maneuverable it makes it very easy for them to get into enemy bases but if you're a new player and you scout with it you're probably not even going to know what anything you see means so these units are expensive and they probably aren't going to be doing much for you but if you're watching pro games and you see them now you know what they do and you probably will see them in pro games because they are extremely useful. Alright, why are these next two units grayed out? That's because they're kind of higher tech units. They require a tech lab attached to the barracks, which is one of the add-ons. So let's go ahead and build that now. You can see it's attached to the barracks. Now, while this tech lab is building, the barracks will not be able to produce any units. But once it's done, now we have access to these units that were before locked to us. So let's talk about the Marauder. This unit has a lot more health than the Marine, and it does a special kind of damage. So if we come down here, you can see it does 10 damage, but versus armored, it does 20 damage. So it does twice as much when attacking units that are classified as armored. So it's kind of like an anti-armor unit, but it's also useful because it has so much more health that if you put it in front of your army, like I have here, it will probably take most of the damage, and it can basically tank for your much more fragile Marines. Now the tech lab can do other things instead of just allowing you to gain access to more advanced units. It can research. So let's start with the stim pack. This is the best by far upgrade available at the tech lab because once you have access to it, the effectiveness of your units, of your marines and marauders will increase dramatically. So let's go ahead and demonstrate what the tech lab, what the stim pack does here. So once we use it, it will actually damage our units, it will cause our units to lose 10 health, but it will increase their movement speed and their attack speed dramatically for a short time. Now this is useful because say you're trying to run away from enemy units, you can go ahead and stim to get away from them, you can stim in order to massively increase the damage output of your army. It's amazing. It really is by far the most impactful upgrade that Terran has. The effectiveness of a Terran army without stim is dramatically different than the effectiveness of a Terran army with stim. Let's just go ahead and demonstrate on this barracks. So this is a Terran army without stim, and this is a Terran army with stim. You can just see how much more quickly it dies there. Now, of course, you don't want to be overstimming your units because every time you do it will cause them to take 10 damage and you can reduce them to a point where they all have barely any health. There is a way to alleviate this, which we'll talk about when we talk about the starport. The next upgrade is called Combat Shield. You can see here it just says Marines gain plus 10 life. So let's go ahead and research that. And once it's done, you can see our Marines now have a little shield and they as I mentioned before, have 10 more life. So this makes them a lot more durable, and it's a very useful upgrade, because since you're going to be building a lot of Marines, each of them having 10 more life is very, very significant. And finally, we have combat shields. Now, this 
only affects the Marauders, but it makes it so that their attacks slow down any units that they hit. So let's go ahead and have these Marines just kind of patrol here. And you can see that once the Marauder shoots one of these Marines, they will begin to move a lot slower. So as you can see, now he's moving a lot slower. If we shoot this Marine, he's also moving a lot slower. And this Marine is shoot moving a lot slower. It does not last forever, but it is very useful. Say you're trying to catch up, you're trying to chase down enemy units, they're running away from you. If you have concussive shells on your Marauders, they will begin to move a lot slower when they're trying to run away. Or, if they're chasing you, you can shoot them with your Marauders, and then they will be moving slower and you will be able to get away much more easily. Now what is the other add-on available? This is called the Reactor. This allows you to build units two at a time, so you can basically get to choose between the more advanced units or being able to build the less advanced units but much more quickly. So most of the time it's advisable to have some barracks with tech labs and then some barracks with reactors. That way you're able to build a lot of marines and you're also able to build some marauders. And that is the main composition of most Terran armies. They'll have Marines, Marauders, and Medivacs, which we'll talk about once we reach the starport. Now, you actually can switch the add-ons available to the building. So let's go ahead and build a factory here, which we'll talk about next. And remember how I talked about how Terran production facilities can lift off? Let's lift off this barracks and float it over here, and now we can lift off this factory and attach this tech lab to it. And this is extremely useful because, say you really want to be building units out of the factory that require a tech lab very quickly, what you can do is, while your factory is still building, you can have a tech lab on the way on this barracks. And then once the tech lab is done, you can switch these two around and then have the tech lab on the factory right away instead of having to make this factory build the tech lab on its own and it allows you to get those units out much more quickly if that makes any sense so if you're watching games and you're wondering why Terran are switching around their units like this all the time that is the reason why because they want certain add-ons on certain buildings alright so I mentioned we talk about the factory we're going to talk about the Hellion, Widowmine, Siege Tank, and Hell Battle. So the Hellion, these are little dune buggies with flamethrowers on top of them. They move very quickly and they do splash damage. So let's actually come here. Whoops, not there. We'll come here, clear all this out. Let's build some Zerglings. We'll talk about Zerglings in the Zerg video. But all you need to know is that they're just basic Zerg units. Woo, we don't need that many Hellions. Okay. So let's go ahead and start this game here. And I'll show you how the Hellions work. So as you can see, they attack in a line and they do what we call splash damage. That means that they can affect more than one unit at once. So you can see that even though there were tons of enemy Zerglings there, with just these few Hellions we managed to roast all of them and only losing one. And in fact I didn't even have to lose that one. I probably could have kept them all alive with better control. Okay. The next unit that comes out of the factory is called the Widow Mine, which is these little things here. Now these are, as you might imagine, mines. They burrow underground and then once they are set up, they are ready to wreak havoc upon enemy forces. So let's go ahead and test on these poor Zerglings that are apparently our little guinea pigs here today. And we'll show you exactly what happens when an army of units walks over some burrowed Widow Mines. So let's see what happens here. And you can see they just get annihilated. Now, Widow Mines do have a long cooldown before they can fire again. You can see 40 seconds, but obviously with each shot they are able to do a lot of damage. Now, they are available to, of course, unburrow, and then you can move them, say, closer to your opponent. So you could, say, burrow these right outside of your opponent's base and create a nasty little trap for them. The final unit that comes out of the factory without it requiring a tech lab is called the Hellbat. Now, you might be you might have already noticed, Hellbat and Hellion, those sound kind of familiar, don't they? And you would be right, because they are actually the same unit. Now, before you can build Hellbats, you would first require an armory, and I'll talk a little bit more about armories when they reach their point in the video. But for 
all you need to know for now is that you require an army armory before you can build Hellbat. So let's go ahead and start again on Zerglings, show you how they work. You can see that they fire in this little cone fashion here, and they will roast these poor little Zerglings alive. We managed to kill a lot of Zerglings there and only lose one Hellion. Now, or Hellbat. Now, again, I keep mixing these up because they are actually the same unit. You can see I just hit a button there and look at that, these look exactly like the Hellions. So, once you have an armory built, you can actually transform any Hellions you have into Hellbats like this. They'll gain a lot of health, they'll lose a lot of movement speed, but they will also start firing in that cone fashion instead of in the straight line. And the final unit that comes out of the factory that we're going to be talking about today, it requires a tech lab to be attached to the factory, so you can only build these one at a time per factory. It's called the Siege Tank. Now, these units, while they're in their normal tank form, are not too impressive, but once you put them into what's called Siege Mode, you will begin to see exactly what is so great about these units. So let's just go ahead, let's clear these, Let's create a few siege tanks here, five should be enough, and a ton of zerglings. Now we'll start this battle. So let's demonstrate siege mode to you here. If I hit this button, you can see that they kind of bolt themselves to the ground and you will have these giant rings around the tanks. This is now their range. Their range becomes huge and they start to deal splash damage. So let's see what happens if these zerglings try to attack these siege tanks. They, you can see that they just basically get annihilated. Now it is worth mentioning that once tanks are in siege mode, they cannot fire on units that are right on top of them. So let's just come here and demonstrate to you what happens if units are able to get right on top of the tanks. They actually manage to kill their own tanks there. The splash damage will affect your own units, but that is the way to counter them once they are in siege mode, is to just get units right on top of them, or to try to kill them when they are not in siege mode. You can see these zerglings will actually demolish these tanks if they're not sieged up. Now, I did mention that siege tanks will bolt themselves to the ground once they are in siege mode. This means that they cannot move. So let's say I wanted to go over here, I would actually have to unsiege these tanks, making them a lot more vulnerable, then I could move them, and then I could put them where I actually wanted them to be and siege them back up. Alright, let's move on to the final Terran production facility, the Starport. Now this is where Terran builds all of their sky units. Everything that comes out of here flies. So the first unit that you can build here is called the Viking. This is an air to air only unit. That means that it can only attack other units that are flying. So let's go ahead and try to attack the starport. You can see there on the left it says must target air units. If we build another Viking, then these would be able to attack each other. Now something that they can do is they can actually land. So let's go ahead and land one Viking here. Now, this is a ground-to-ground -ground only unit. So it's walking on the ground. Now it can attack ground units, but it can no longer attack air units. Of course, you can transform it back, and once again, it can attack other air units, but not ground units. So they're usually used as just anti-air units. Their little ground transformation thing is not utilized all too often. Next, we have the Medevac. Now, this is the unit that I've been kind of alluding to a little earlier. This unit is amazing for Terran because it will heal biological units. So let's just make some Marines here. Let's use the Stimpak. You can see that right now it's firing this little green beam of life, I guess, onto the Marines and healing them back up. So with Medivacs, you can actually gain all the benefits of Stimpak without having to suffer the penalties of the lost life. You can also load the Marines up into a Medivac, and you can load actually any ground unit into a Medivac. So let's go ahead and load these Marines up, and then now that they're inside the Medivac, they can fly around and you can drop them off into other locations. So these Marines would not be able to get over here on their own, but with the Medivac they can. And this is very useful because you are able to attack in places where your opponent 
is not really defending, and that's part of what makes Terran Terran. The ability to attack basically anywhere with the use of these medevacs. Now, I mentioned that um, you can load any ground unit up into a medevac. However, they all have different cargo space. So, marines, you can put eight marines into one medevac, but you can only put four marauders into a single medevac. You can see now another one can't get up there. So, the second ability that medevacs have, aside from being able to heal and lift or load units up, is their boost. So, they have a 20 second boost available to them that's on a one minute cooldown. So, this allows them to get out of danger or just get to whatever location they want to be more quickly. Of course, they can be reactored out since they're not considered to be an advanced tech unit. So it's a very good idea to make sure that your starport has a reactor on it because these units are incredibly useful. Let's go ahead and talk about these starport units that require a tech lab. This is called the Raven. This is kind of a spellcaster unit. It is a detector. So remember how I mentioned how you can drop a scan on top of a cloaked unit in order to actually see it? If you have a Raven, you don't need to do that. You just need to have it near enough the cloaked unit and then you will be able to see and attack it. Let's examine all of the Raven's abilities. The first is the build auto turret. This just creates a little structure. It can shoot ground or air and it will basically defend locations for you. It's not amazing, but it's certainly better than nothing. The next ability available to Ravens is called the Point Defense Drone. So let's build some Corruptors here. What the Point Defense Drone does is it will shoot down incoming projectiles. So you can see I built the Point Defense Drone, and now these Corruptors are trying to attack the Raven, but the Point Defense Drone is just shooting down all of their attacks. Now the Point Defense Drone does have limited energy, and once it runs out, then it will no longer be effective for you. But as long as it has energy, your raven is basically safe from almost any attack. And finally, we have the Seeker Missile. Now this attaches to an enemy unit, so let's just go ahead and attach it to this Mutalisk here. You can see it will lock onto this Mutalisk and it will follow it and it will, you know, basically go to wherever that Mutalisk goes. Now this does splash damage, so if you actually manage to land it on a huge pack of enemy units, it will deal damage to all of them. And by using this effectively, this is kind of an unrealistic scenario here, but if you manage to get kind of like a miracle hit like this, it can do terrible, terrible damage. Now, it is worth mentioning that the Seeker Missile does have a limited range, so let's go ahead and attach it to this Mutalisk. If you run away the unit that it's attached to quick enough, then as you can see there, it will just fizzle out. It's also worth mentioning that it can do splash damage to your own unit, so let's attach it here. You can see that once it collides, it actually did damage to our own Raven. And the final unit that we will be discussing in this video is the Banshee. So this is an air to ground only unit. It's fairly fragile, but it does a lot of damage. Now, what you can do is at the tech lab, you can research it cloak. So this makes it turn invisible. And if your opponent has no form of detection, they will not be able to attack it even though you can attack their units. So that means that if you catch your opponent off guard enough with this unit, you will be able to win games with just one of these. So they can be extremely useful, but on the same token, if your opponent is prepared for it, it turns out that it was basically just a lot of wasted money from you. Alright, before I wrap up this video, I'd like to talk about the other Terran structures that I've been mentioning but haven't really discussed yet. The engineering bay and the armory, these are structures where you upgrade your units. So you can actually upgrade your infantry here. So those are your marines and marauders. You can make them deal more damage and you can upgrade their armor so that they take less damage. And these are extremely important. Upgrades can really make the difference between winning and losing a game. And then similarly, at the armory, you can upgrade your vehicle and ship 
weapons and armor. There's also the bunker. This is a place where you can load infantry into. So let's just make four marines here out of this barracks. You can put them into this bunker and then they will still be able to attack, but your opponent will not be able to attack those marines until they destroy the bunker. And we also have the missile turret. You need an engineering bay before you can build the missile turret, but once you have it done, it will shoot down enemy air units. It's extremely good at that. And of course, you can mass repair this in order to make sure that it doesn't really die to almost anything. All right, that's it for the introduction to Terran. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I did not go through every single unit that Terran has because that would have made this video take way too long. If you do have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments. My name has been Limbic. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Next week, we will be introducing you to the Protoss race. Alright, at least it's not an hour long.